You're like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. Those are some stiff words. Churches aren't very good at promoting this sort of honesty. I have a friend uh, who was an associate pastor at a church several years ago. And many years ago, he was having a hard time. He was just struggling. To hear God's voice, he was losing a lot of confidence and passion. He needed some prayer. Uh, So one Sunday morning when he was scheduled to preach, he decided to confess this to the congregation. Which he did. Pastor didn't like it. It was too destabilizing from the church. It uh, drew his spiritual credibility into question. So the pastor benched my friend until he figured out his problems. What's worse, he didn't even tell my friend that he was being benched. He just didn't get to preach for many months. And I later wondered how anybody in that church is supposed to deal with their own doubts and loneliness and depression if not even the leaders of the church are really allowed to do that. So if you really want to obey the ninth commandment, here's another assignment. Share a secret with someone you can trust. Give someone in God's family the chance to really get to know you. Stop bearing false testimony against yourself. We can't be healed that way. We can't be loved in community that way. That's what it means to live in honest community. It means to be ourselves. And lastly, speak the truth to each other. To obey the ninth commandment isn't just a matter of not lying about others in court. It means to speak the truth to each other. Paul writes in Ephesians, he says, speak the truth in love. Now, the truth can take on many different forms. It can be honest observations about someone's tendencies. It can be feelings of love and devotion that we don't share often enough. It can be scripture that we know somebody needs to hear. It can be concerns and criticisms we have. It can be the truth of the gospel that we don't actually hear enough, that Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead and is waiting to spend eternity with us. I mean, that's the truth, right? But this is what it means to live in honest community with each other, to not just not lie about others, but to speak the truth of what we know. We're not very good at this either, though. We're not very good at speaking truth to each other or receiving truth from other people. In fact, our deacon team, our leadership team here at Rooftop, uh, we've been doing some leadership assessments. And by far, the most common weakness among our leaders, including our staff and our deacons and our leaders and our small group leaders, by far the most common weakness is the ability to invite and receive feedback. We just don't do that well. We don't know how to ask for feedback. We don't know how to receive it. Maybe it's arrogance, maybe it's hypersensitivity, maybe it's just not knowing how to do it. We just don't do it well. But this is how we're going to grow and learn and live in truth and obedience to the ninth commandment. In fact, uh, our leaders don't do well with criticism, uh, but that's not all the time. I remember a scene from several months ago. I was doing staff reviews for our beloved staff team. Uh, Every year I sit down with with Jason and Jeremy and... uh, give them some feedback on their job performance, and I have lots of positive comments for them both and, and critical comments and suggestions. And after I gave Jeremy his comments, uh, he, this is a few months ago, uh, he thanked me for my honesty, and then he, then he said something I have never in all my many, many, many years of pastoral ministry, being sarcastic because I'm such a young pup, uh, I've never heard in my many years of church leadership, he said this, he said, thank you for your comments. I'll think about all of them. Are there any other concerns you have of my performance that you didn't share or maybe didn't know how to share? I have never heard anybody ask for more. Give it to me. And what's funny, what's funny is, there was. There was something else, but I wasn't sure how to say it, so I decided not to. But given the invitation, I bumbled my way through it, and we had the best part of our conversation. That's what it means to live in honest community. It means to hear and speak and invite the truth to that other, to to one another. And in that respect, if you want to obey the ninth commandment, here's something to do. Ask someone you trust if there's anything they have to tell you. Ask someone if there's any words of criticism they have to share. 
Are there any sins in your life that you're not seeing? Is there any message from God that they're not sharing? So all that to say, the ninth commandment was given to the Israelites in a legal context. It was designed to protect the innocent. But as we'd expect, it means so much more. It means to live an honest, truth-telling community. And in fact, I don't want to leave it there this morning. I want to give you a chance to think more deeply about how the ninth commandment applies to your life. On the first Sunday of every month, we take a few minutes for monthly prayer time just to pray for something important or learn something important about prayer. And this morning, I want to give you a few minutes to pray and think about what we just talked about. In your program is a blue sheet. Go ahead and pull it out. I want to hear lots of rustling. Well done with the rustling. <laughs> and it's got questions pertaining to the topic of honest community. And there's three questions for the three points. Use one of those pens or pencils in the seats in front of you uh, to write down some answers prayerfully. Is there anyone in your life that you really want to get to know better? Who? What do you want to know about them? Is there something important about yourself that you're keeping from loved ones or from your church family? What is it? Who can you tell? What would you tell them? Is there an important truth that you have to say to a brother or sister? Encouragement or criticism? What is it? God's asking you those questions this morning. He really is. And he wants to hear what you have to say. So take a couple minutes. I'll come back up and we'll pray. And if you didn't get a blue sheet, we can give you one. Just raise your hand, we'll come get you.